once he gets talking, we'll, we'll probably want to check the sound check from somebody on this remote. To the top. All right. All Can, right. You Can you hear me? Can you hear me? Yep. Echo. Well, no, turn that off. Yeah. Can you turn these off? Yeah, we're going to turn those off. You're going to plug off. this into your, this into your computer. computer. No, I don't have that kind of plug. No, it's USB C now. So if you can just turn these speakers off, we should be fine. Yeah, he's trying to do that. My microphone's good. Are we okay? Yeah. Okay. And can anyone, anyone else outside this room hear me? Yes. Yes. Anyway. Speakers on? No, I turned my speakers off. Okay, oh, so um, and then you can. Oh, can you hear me? That's how it works. It's the only way we're gonna. Sorry. Somebody put up in the chat if you can hear. Both are loud and clear. I heard someone say something. Are Are we good? We can I hear you fine, Leon. You're great. You can hear us. We don't know about Zoom. I can even hear the non Leon. Dennis, you're unmuted. Why don't you tell yes. Leon what he can do? You can hear me okay? No, I can hear you okay. You, you aren't hearing us that are on the end. Um, yeah, let me chat on this a little bit first. All right, everything. I was sharing my volume. Uh, my, my microphone is on. I'm unmuted. I can hear you. But you can hear me. I, you can hear me. Yes, I can hear oh, you. Okay. So am I good to go? Yeah. We, All you right. Can't, Here we are. Hi, I'm you can't Elijah hear us. Can I are you hearing stop? us? Yeah, we can hear you, Dennis. Yeah, but I'm about, okay. yeah. Yes. Yeah, okay. It's just through the speaker on my computer. So so okay. we'll, we'll go to questions. That, that makes sense, actually. Okay. Go for it. Right. Sorry, I wasn't prepared for the Zoom aspect here, so pardon any little technical weirdness as we start. I'm going to talk to you today about fourth recognizers and my first stab at doing this in Swift Fourth. This concept has been discussed for about the last 10 years or so. The first time I saw it, I think, was in 2014, and it was proposed by a guy named Matthias Truta, who is the was was the of AM Fourth. Um, he has sadly passed away in the past couple of years. Um, but several other people have picked up this concept and have pushed it forward in the standards process to try to get it standardized. Um, and I'll start, I have a background slide first. Is all oh, is this, what is all this junk on top of it? Oh, that's you, okay. Um, before the background, I guess a little history, someone proposed this um, to the stand, fourth standard committee. Several people picked it up and ran with it. There are implementations in G4th for sure. Uh, VFX re recently implemented this, and I'm the I'm the I was the holdout uh, for two reasons. One, I'm busy, and two, I didn't get it. I just didn't quite understand what this whole thing was about or why I should want it. And finally, after uh, the pandemic years of not meeting in person, our first in person standard meeting in Euro 4th uh, in September, uh, just outside Rome. And several of the people sat down with me and one beat me up a little bit because I haven't gotten on the program here. And two, gave me the explanation that I was missing, um, you know, the background and what, what this does. And um, Stephen was kind enough to sit down with me and spend quite a bit of time going through the VFX implementation and showing his view of how it works. Um, Anton showed me the G4th version and gave me some very important background. So I went home and I did this and it, delightfully, it only took two hours <laughs> to implement something I had been put, putting off for years. So the driver behind this from Matthias's original proposal is that there's no standard method for extending the fourth interpreter's handling of text tokens, all those little 
words and numbers and things that you come across in four. Uh, most systems, maybe all systems, have hooks to extend parts of the interpreter to allow you to expand the kinds of things that you can process from your input stream. The hooks themselves are non-standard, which of course is the problem and differ from system to system. So if you are trying to write a library or implement another system, there's no uh, prescribed way for you to do this that behaves in a predictable way to use. The classic fourth interpreter handles fourth words, execute or compile, and numbers, pushing them on the stack as literals with the obvious extensions, floating point, uh, character literals, and things like that. The recognizer implementation takes the classic fourth interpreter and divides it up into chunks. And I'm uh, credit to Matthias for this. I'm quoting him from his original proposal almost verbatim here. Uh, the interpreter part is the part that runs on the outside. It maintains state and organizes the work. And if you don't know state, state is a system variable that contains a zero if you are interpreting or a minus one if you are compiling. The token recognizer is called from the interpreter loop and it analyzes each text token to see if it matches that criteria for a certain data type. In the, in the classic worth interpreter, that was just a simple test. Is it, a, is it in the dictionary? Is it a number? No, abort. Um, the handler is, takes the result of the parsing words and hands it over to the interpreter with a pointer to data-specific handling methods. What do I do with this depending upon the state that I'm in? Um, there are three methods for each data type. Interpret, compile, and postpone. Uh, postpone really is kind of a special case and has always been a thorn inside. And so it made sense for it to be split out as having its own handler here. The interpret and compile methods are called from within the interpreter loop based on state. The postpone method is called directly from postpone, and we'll get to that in a minute. The combination of a parsing word, the part that actually takes the token and says, do I know what to do with this? And the set of data handling words that that gets passed off to all as a unit is called a recognizer. For those of you who aren't, who can't see me, I'm talking with my hands right now. There's a, there is no strict one-to-one -one relation between the parsing words and the data handling sets. And I'll actually show you that at the end. Um, for example, the data handling set for a single cell numbers can be used by different parsing words. Um, the word that parses a character literal treats it just the same way as it would a numeric value that it finds in the input. Uh, in the Windows implementation, we have a, a parsing, a recognizer that parses Windows constants, all of those gazillion constants that we harvest from the header files in the Windows system. And I'll actually show you that on a live Windows system. Um, and of course, floating point. The simplified and extensible interpreter loop now looks like this. It's so small. We do a stack check. We do call this parse name that gets the next text token from the input stream. While there's something there, it has a non-zero length. We take the system recognizer stack. That's a, a little side trip on the naming here. I am not in love with the naming for any of the components of this scheme. I'm using them all as placeholders. They're based on existing work and a couple of things that I just invented out of the air. Um, this is my first pass through this just to get a working model of refinements on the naming later. All suggestions welcome from people who like naming things, not necessarily my strong point. So the system recognizer list is called the rec stack and we pass that off to recognize. And when we come out the other end, we have something that we know what to do with based on state, we index into it and execute it, that's it. That's the entire interpreter loop. So the interpreter loop is extremely simple. It takes what used to be a very messy process and passes it off to the recognizers, which themselves are fairly simple. So this is nice. Um, my initial take on recognizers was that it sounded complicated. In fact, it's simple and it simplifies the whole system implementation. So um, that vector index by state, oh, I actually, I think I walk through this. Yeah, here we go. So the you take the name, 
pass it through recognize. Recognize runs through, sees if it if it hit gets a hit. If it does, or even if it doesn't, it takes whatever it gets and, and uh, passes it through this vector and executes it. So each of the token recognizers, the, the first part, the, the front part, has this format, rec dash some type, rec dash name, rec dash num, or some of the ones we built in. And it takes as its input the address and length of the text token that you just got from parse name as the input. And if it recognizes the token, it returns the address of the handler vector, which is adder one, along with any data required by the interpret, compile, or postpone behaviors of that vector. Otherwise, it returns adder two, which is the address of rec num, the unrecognized handler. That's your last resort. That's what happens when you fall at the end. In my implementation, uh, if you actually execute rec num, it will print the name of the word and a question mark after it, the token and a right question mark after it, and abort. Postpone is a special case. And it just takes that same sequence that you saw inside the interpret loop and just does the fetch execute directly on it because it's the first one. And we'll see that structure in a moment here. And here it is. So I have this deferred rec type colon, and I believe that this actually goes back to Matthias's original proposal. It's certainly also used in other systems. And it compiles the three element vector table that handles a specific recognizer type that we'll call a rec type. So it takes the three execution tokens, uh, grabs a name from the input stream and makes it and defines a word that's just a vector table. It's just literally create comma, comma, comma. That's all it does. Um, the order of those is important as it turns out that uh, if you take state and add two to it, you'll get a cell offset of zero or one, which is exactly correct for the postpone and the compile behaviors. And if you did have a state minus two, you could get into the uh, postpone behavior out of it, but we don't. Um, Brad is nodding his head, so he appreciates the elegance of this lovely little short cut. I think I stole this from... Um, um, so a recognizer sequence is, and th this term stack keeps getting used for these things. A stack in this uh, implementation is just a list of things with a count at the front of it, and you can add things to the end or remove things from the end, making it sort of stack-like. So a recognizer sequence is a stack of token recognizers. I have no idea what that was supposed to be. The first cell of the sequence is the number of recognizers in the sequence. The rest of the cells in the sequence are the actual execution tokens of those rec types, uh, the rec words that we, we saw earlier. The token recognizers in the sequence are executed in order, that's important, until one of them does not return rec type num. And if you get all the way to the end, then you do get rec type num. So it's similar to search order. Yes, in fact, we have had that discussion many times. Okay. It's very much. And um, when we get to the end, get recognizers and second round recognizers are modeled on get order and set order. Yeah. Yeah, there feels like a close relationship to, to search orders, even though it's not really a search order. The inner loop recognize that does all the guts of the work is this very, very simple loop. Um, it just runs down the list. Let's see how highlighted it is runs down the list. So you have the um, uh, C adder len is the token you're looking for, and adder one is the address of the actual recognizer sequence. As you saw earlier, the system one is called rec stack, my placeholder. Um, so it goes through and looks for those, and you can see in the inner loop, if it finds it, it just bails out. It says unloop exit. And so what it comes out of there with is whatever the thing you fetch executed has pushed on the stack. And if it doesn't find it, it just falls out the end with rec type num, which is which itself is also useful. Here's a simple example, rec find, which is the thing that finds things in the dictionary. 
Um, and there are two cases here for immediate and non-immediate words. The first one we'll look at is the non-immediate. So we, the rec find is extremely simple. It uses our internal word find, which does a dictionary lookup. And the dictionary lookup takes the address and length of the string you're looking up and it return comes back to you with uh, a minus one for immediate, a one for non-immediate, I'm sorry, other way around. Minus one for a regular word, one for immediate, and zero if it doesn't find it. So for the one case, which is immediate, we do the um, rec type in, and the behavior for an immediate will execute it no matter what you're doing, and if you're comp postponing, you compile it. And this is just the regular old word that you're going to compile into the dictionary if you're compiling, or you're just going to execute it if you're interpreting. And then, of course, none if you don't find it at all. Second example is rec num, the part that does numbers, single ins, double cell numbers. So there's the rec type vector that tells you what the three behaviors are. Rec num returns some useful stuff from the stack. Go to the next one. If you have a single cell number, our word that tries to evaluate numbers from a token, any number, returns you a zero if it's not a number, one if it's a single number, two if it's a double number. Very easy to remember. In the case of a single number, uh, you if you're interpreting, you just leave the stack. And if you're that drop drops the execution token of the compiling word. Otherwise, you execute the compiling word and it compiles the literal into the into the definition that you're compiling. And double kind of just does the same thing, except it uses two literal. Simple. And here are the sequence operators. This is very much what I said, get order and set order. So get recognizers and set recognizers actually have the same stack effects as set order and get order. And they take the list of all those uh, rec words and the number of them and put them into the list. And then for people who build libraries and want to perhaps add a recognizer, for a while and then remove it. I also supplied plus recognizer, which takes the execution token, appends it to the end of the stack, and minus rec recognizer, which is just a pop drop. Um, I have a paper that is mostly done. It's on our website. There was a link to it in one of the emails. I shortened the name a little bit, and it's at forth.com slash recognizers. And that is all for now. That's wonderful, Leon. Well, I don't... Thank you so much. <laughs> Many Please. thanks. Many uh, thanks to Stephen for talking me through this. All right, Dennis, uh, are, you, I, I, are you able to hear us right now, Dennis? I like it. <laughs> that, it reminds yes. Me of, um, reminds me a little bit of Color Force Dispatch or something. It's nice to be able to plug in stuff into the... Uh, Nice. All right. I like I'll, it. I'll assume that Dennis is taking a nap right now. I'm going to go. Good for him. No, nope, I, I said yes. Thing, uh, see if I can get away with it. Uh, I'd like to uh, thank uh, Leon not only for uh, presenting his talk, but also for his donation to uh, <laughs> my uh, feeble bank account uh, to offset the cost of uh, all these hundreds of meetup participants. Uh, if you're on this, uh, this is where meetup is where we put up information about the meeting uh, that we're having, the link, the times, uh, the agenda when I have it ready, uh, a day late and a dollar short. Uh, it's all on meetup, so I recommend you go there to, uh, to look at this stuff. Uh, Sometimes it uh, it may not make it to the list and it's the email list in its complete form. And I know that lots of you aren't able to get on our meetup list, but that's the way life is sometimes. Uh, we're going to take another crack 